So, during one of my classes, it was raining mildly outside, and one of the students was a little late. And like every student who was a little late, he came last five steps, you know, very hard, and he was out of breath. And I was looking at him. Okay, it's getting a little too much. And but before I could say anything, right, he stopped and he said, "Sir, I was riding my bicycle, and uh, when I stopped, I noticed that the front side of my T-shirt was completely wet." Whereas the back was not wet at all, and he said he looked up to see if the rain itself was falling at an angle at him, and it wasn't. The rain was falling vertically down. Then he was curious, why is it that only the front part got wet, even though the rain is falling vertically? Now, have you ever had this experience? Now, to see this, right? Let's begin with something that's easy to imagine. Let's imagine that there is a car coming right at you at fifty kilometers per hour. Now, if you get suddenly brave and you start running towards it at some 10 kilometers per hour, then we know that you will see the car coming towards you at 60 kilometers per hour. Now, the idea here is, as you already know from 1D motion, assuming your point of view means that you assume that you are at rest, which means you'll subtract your velocity from yourself and from everybody else. This is basically what we do when we say we're entering somebody's point of view. Now, this need not be confined to just motion along one line, right? So, what interesting result might we get if we start extending this to more than one dimensions? Now, to see this, let's make our car a toy car so that we can play with it better, and let's take a conveyor belt over here, right? That's going to run like that. And if I place that, say, remote control car right over there, and if I just let it be, what's going to happen? The conveyor belt is going to move, and I'm going to see the car coming right at me, like in that direction, right? But now the car was switched off. But what if I were to switch the car on now, so that on a stationary conveyor belt, the car would have gone in that direction? Now you know from whatever you learned in vectors that now if both these happen simultaneously, what will happen? The conveyor belt moving this way and the car going downwards, the car will appear to be coming at an angle towards me like this, right? This is from what we know about vectors and resultant velocities, right? Now how can we extend this to the first question that we asked about rain? So if you were to stop gravity for a moment. And also stop the raindrop that's falling such that its vertical velocity is zero. If that's okay, so that if you look at a raindrop which is falling, all of a sudden it it looks weirdly stationary over there. It's floating in the air. Now, what you're going to do is start running towards it at some speed. Let's say 10 kilometers per hour. So if you start running towards it at some speed, for you, because you assume you're at rest, it's as good as somebody turned on a conveyor belt on which that raindrop is moving. So you will see the raindrop simply coming towards you at 10 kilometers per hour. Simple kind of 1D relative motion, right? So for you now, because you assume you are at rest, you are just seeing a raindrop coming towards you. Now let's switch gravity on, so that the raindrop also falls down at some constant velocity. Now I know you might ask, shouldn't the raindrop fall at some acceleration? Let's say it's reached terminal velocity. Okay, air is pushing it up, right? So it's falling at some constant velocity for simplicity. So it's falling at some 15 kilometers per hour. Then 15 in that direction, 10 towards you. As far as you are concerned, the raindrop has two velocities in perpendicular directions. So the resultant velocity must be at an angle like this. And isn't that what you must see? Now the interesting thing here is the direction of the rain itself is probably going to get skewed by the fact that you are moving. Now the crazy thing here is, rain that's falling vertically with respect to the earth will to you appear as if it's coming at an angle simply because of the fact that you are moving. Now you might want to know what angle will it seem to fall at, because you might want to know what angle to hold the umbrella in. Right? That's the most common question. So if you want to calculate that, then all you have to do is find out what angle that resultant rain makes. Yeah, you have your velocity over here and the rain's velocity vertically. If you want to calculate the angle theta with the vertical, your angle will just be tan inverse of your velocity by the velocity of the rain. These are magnitudes, right? So in this case, it will be 10 by 15. Or two by three, tan inverse two by three, which is approximately somewhere in the 30s, the angle. Just to give you an intuition. Now, what have we really done here? The crux is nothing different from 1D motion, right? If you enter somebody's point of view, subtract their velocity from everything that's around. So what you did here was you subtracted your velocity from the rain, and that's it, right? So in 1D motion, how did we write this? Velocity of b a, which is basically velocity of b with respect to a, is equal to velocity of b minus velocity of a. Now. Two one D motions equation. All you have to do is vectorize it. In other words, put arrows everywhere. So what you're basically saying is that this equation is not just confined to things happening along one line. 
even if there's a velocity like that you subtract the velocity of yours in any other direction using vector laws so that subtraction there is a vector subtraction so this is your general relative motion equation which is vba equals vb minus va with their vectors but now you must have a question right vba is velocity of v with respect to a but what is this vb and va velocity of b with respect to what it's sounding as if there is some absolute velocity but you know that there is no absolute velocity so what is it that we really mean there most cases what we mean here is these two velocities vb and va are from some third neutral frame right these two have to be from the same frame typically it's the ground frame right but it's important to understand this because otherwise there can be a scope for confusion so to be more precise we'll add vbg and vag over here but it can be something else it's usually the ground now to see this let's ask ourselves a very interesting question let's say you're running on a mountain like this and all of a sudden it begins to start raining at an angle like that now you have a bag of valuables that you really want to protect okay from the rain so which side must you wear the bag on or in other words which side of yours do you expect to get wet now you might have been tempted to say i'm running like this rain's falling like that obviously i'll get wet on the back side but how did you decide this without knowing the velocities now you might ask how does the velocity matter here right let's show you let's say that this mountain that you're running on you're running with a velocity such that your components are 6i plus j so some speed like that which has components like this components are usually the best way to deal with vectors you already know that and let's say the rain's falling at 3i minus 3j so at an angle like this right behind you so very much similar to the case that we discussed so what are you trying to find here the angle at which the rain appears to come to you which means you're trying to find the relative velocity of the rain with respect to you which means that you must subtract your velocity from the rain's velocity you're trying to find vrm you're trying to do vr minus vm now but with components here this is going to be trivial right your vr is 3i minus 3j yeah because the rain's falling down and your vm is 6i plus j so vr minus vm will look like this so that finally when you get an answer you have 3 minus 6 over here which is minus 3 and you have on the other side minus 3 minus 1 which is minus 4 So you have minus three i, minus four j as the relative velocity with respect to you. Now observe something over here, right? The i component is minus, which means we took this as the positive direction. If you got a component negative, it means that to you the rain appears to come from this side, and of course with the vertical component like that. So finally you have rain that's coming at some angle. We'll find out what the angle is. But the crux here is that as far as you are concerned, the rain is going to be hitting you from the front. So we just showed you a case where. From the ground, it all looks like you're running like this. Rain's hitting you from the back, but as far as you're concerned, the rain's hitting you from the front. So, if you were to wear a bag, it's better you wear the bag behind. So, the exact angle, what is it over here? Minus three, minus four, right? That's yes, the angle is going to be tan inverse three by four. It's a famous angle. I know you can calculate that. So, the crux over here is that we cannot answer which direction the rain will hit you without also knowing your velocity, right? So, how does your velocity play here? The idea is that there are more than one ways to get wet. One way is for the rain to hit you. In our case, rain at three as its horizontal component. So if you had had any velocity less than three, the rain hits you and you get wet. But what's the other way? The other way to get wet is you go hit the rain. And how can you do that? If your horizontal component is more than that of the rain, which is what we saw, you had a horizontal component of six. So in one sense, you are hitting the rain. So both these are ways in which you can get wet. But the interesting question is. What would happen if you were exactly running with a velocity that's equal to the horizontal component of the rain? So the rain was coming at three, and you were also running at three. Neither would the rain be hitting you from the back, nor would you be hitting the rain from the front. And that's a very interesting case, isn't it? Now we began this journey with one question, right? Should you walk or run in the rain? And at that time, it seemed like a trivial question. You run as fast as possible, spend as little time as possible, and you'll get less wet. But now we've shown you that running as fast as possible might let you. hit more rain drops on the way so the question is not as trivial as it seemed right but now you're infinitely more equipped to answer that very question with the final idea that we told that there are more than one ways to get wet so take some time out to think what might be the best velocity to run at when the rain is coming at various angles